Hello guys, in this video let's talk about the new LiveWire 3 syntax, about form objects, validation and attributes for the rules. So LiveWire 3 introduced quite a few places with new syntax, but how do we use that in more complex forms than in the docs? So docs show title and content with simple required rules, but then I get questions like this one. If form has many fields like 20, how do we use that? Do we repeat all the attributes? Do we use form objects? Or can we use form requests? And stuff like that. And today let's discuss all of that. It will be a bit longer video, I suspect, because I want to discuss various options. The short answer is there's no wrong options here. It's whatever you prefer. But let's discuss the possibilities. And for that, we created a small demo project with a form like this. It's not 20 fields, it's around 10, but still pretty realistic. And then in your live wire component, you have something like this, a lot of properties, how to validate them, should we use form objects or not, and what are our options. And I will be happy to discuss it with you in the comments, which you prefer, or maybe I will miss something. So the first option is not actually from LiveWire 3, but it is mentioned as the main option in LiveWire 3 docs, which is define the properties and then call this validate with validation rules for all of them. So the set of validation rules is an array parameter to this validate. If you load the validation docs of LiveWire 3, this is exactly what they show. Straightforward, clear, but maybe not ideal if you have 10 or 20 fields. Where can we extract those rules? One of the options is to define them separately. So you can offload this array, call this validate here and have public function rules, which returns that array like this. This is also mentioned in the docs, but a bit lower down below, you can have something like this. Especially it is useful when you have more complicated rules, not just required, but something like rule unique, or in this case, exists with something or your custom validation rules. So then you have rules kind of hidden down below in your component, and the main action happens here, save and properties. Speaking of those properties, another way to define the validation rules for each of them is to use PHP attributes, which are suggested in LiveWire 3. So I've pasted this set of rules. And of course, we need to autocomplete the rule from LiveWire attributes like this. So now we have the same set of rules just defined at the attributes themselves. So you don't need to define rules as a method or in this validate. So you don't need that method at all then. But if we go back to the previous thought, if you have more complex rules like rule exist or custom validation rule, you would not be able to easily define them as attributes because PHP attribute syntax is quite limited. So you could use that for simple validation rules like required or the ones that you see on the screen here. And again, I will repeat, I'm listing the options, but it's your personal preference which ones to use. If LiveWire 3 introduced those attributes, LiveWire 2 way, LiveWire 2 syntax still works. But now let's see another new thing in LiveWire 3, which is form objects. This is another option where to offload all those properties. If we take a look again at LiveWire documentation, there's form object section. It's not a separate section in the menu, but inside of forms, there's extracting to form object, which you can achieve by doing artisan command LiveWire form, and then it generates the form that you can use inside of your component. So basically your component becomes really short and all the logic of all the fields is inside a form object. It's very similar what we want to achieve in Laravel almost all the time is to shorten the controller and offload the logic to somewhere, to form request, for example, to eloquent accessors, mutators, to services and stuff like that. So in save, you just use this form validate and this form all for saving and membership form contains all the fields. And basically it's a copy paste from the component to here. And here you may use attributes or this is commented out, but you also may use rules method. Again, it's your personal preference. Or again, if you have more complex rules, then probably method is more appropriate. And you can shorten that component even more if you use more features of form object. For example, in the form object, you define store, you use 
this all and then in your component you just need to call this form store what also needs to change by the way in the blade file of your component in here with wire model you would need to use form dot and then field so then both component and blade works with this form object so the point of using form objects in LiveWire, again, it's an optional feature, but you may want to offload the data management from the main component, which acts like a controller, to form object, which acts like form request in Laravel. Also, another benefit similar to form request, you can reuse the same form object in the create form and edit form. But personally, I'm not a big fan of that approach because so many times on forums and elsewhere I've seen the questions. I have a certain validation rule for like unique exists or something like that, but it works well with create form, but it doesn't work well with update form because it doesn't take the current record with its relationships properly. So after seeing that multiple times, both in Laravel and especially with Livewire 3, if people start to use form objects with the new syntax and try to reuse the form object in both create and edit components, I started recommending to separate those two forms. Reusing is nice when it works, but when you need to debug why it doesn't work, it's not that pleasant. For smaller forms, for simple and identical validation rules for create and update form, yes, cool. But if there's at least one difference, like in unique or exists or something, I would suggest to have two separate forms with two separate form objects classes if you use them. Again, it's my personal opinion. Happy to discuss in the comments. Now let's get back to form requests a little and I will answer a question. Can we use form requests in Livewire instead of form objects? or inside of form objects. For example, you have form object properties defined here, but those rules would come from form request because you may want to use them elsewhere. For example, that form will be not only Livewire, but from some mobile app with API with the same validation rules. So maybe it's worth to have form request class for that. And by default, you cannot use form requests in Livewire. It was explained in Livewire 2 documentation, specifically due to the nature of Livewire, hooking into HTTP request wouldn't make sense. And I agree, because Laravel form requests are typically used for HTTP request to be validated, which conflicts with HTTP requests of Livewire to update the form with all the dynamic elements. And in Livewire 3 documentation, I've searched for form request and it isn't even found. So in v3, no one is even talking about form requests. But there's kind of a hacky way to use rules from form request. We have a short article about that on laravel.daily.com. It is for Livewire 2, but the same works for Livewire 3. So you define your form request with rules as usual. And then in your component rules or in your form object rules, you just create the object of that form request and you take rules from there. Not a standard way, but it works. Finally, we tried one more way to describe that array of attributes of properties like this. What if you define the array of data instead of having property by property here or in the form object? But to be honest, it didn't really stick because it looks like this then. You need to use data everywhere, validate the array. And I thought maybe we could use something like value object in this case. And for those of you who don't know what value objects is, I have a separate long form tutorial about value objects and DTOs, data transfer objects and stuff like that. And I will link that as well in the description below. But in Livewire 3 case, form object class actually acts like a value object in a way. At least that's how I understand and interpret the intention of Caleb, Livewire author. And again, I'm happy to discuss that in the comments. So to summarize, old Livewire 2 syntax still works. If you want to use form objects and offload your properties to shorten the component, it's fine. If you want to use PHP attributes and define the validation rules with properties, it's fine. But for more complex rules, it's better to use rules method, again, inside of component or inside of form objects. And if you do want to use form requests from Laravel, you can load the rules as array into Livewire component or into form objects. What do you think about so-called summary investigation? 
Which way do you prefer? Maybe I missed something. Let's discuss in the comments below. And if you want to learn more about Livewire 3, new features and generally learn more about Livewire, one of my newest courses is specifically about that, Livewire 3 from scratch. I will put the link to that in the description below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.